Hi, I'm Daniel Francis, co-owner and industrial designer here at MSB Technology. We have some news about firmware updates coming to our current lineup of DACs, including the Reference and Select DAC. I would like to go over some of the features with you today and highlight how easy it is to do firmware updates in the field and hopefully encourage you to upgrade your DAC at home so you can benefit from these improvements. This new firmware update includes some stability and performance increases. This will hopefully reduce any issues or bugs when playing back different sample rates, switching between inputs, and general performance of our DACs. Along with the stability improvements, a couple new features will be added with this firmware, including a new display dimming mode, a video mode that is input specific, along with support for the new universal I2S input module. I'd like to start this video out by showing you how to navigate the DAC menu. All of our DACs share a similar interface, so this guide should help you uh, get into your menu and see how your DAC is configured and take advantage of these new features. My personal recommendation when working on your DAC is to use your remote control for navigating the menu. This is the easiest way to get in and out of the menu and see settings at a glance. To get in the DAC menu, you will start with the menu button on the remote. It is these three horizontal lines. Simply click it once. When you're in the menu, you're going to be able to scroll up and down through different settings. As you make changes to your DAC, these settings will not be saved until you exit the menu again by clicking the menu button on the remote. You can also access the menu directly on the DAC by clicking the menu button, going in, using the knob to change the different um, options, using the arrow key to go into a mode, uh, the back arrow key to go out, and then the menu will not save until you hit the menu button again, leaving the menu. A couple things you'll be able to see right away when going into the menu is as you scroll through, you'll see several settings, but you'll also see the configuration of the firmware in your current DAC. So here we have the software number, um, for the Cascade DAC, we will have 1.6.1.0, and that is our current rev number. To encourage you to get started, I'd like to highlight a few specific things about the firmware updates. First off, it's quite simple, but it does mean you need to have a bit perfect source. The way our firmware updates work is you play an audio file back through your system. Uh, if the BitPerfect source plays it back directly to the DAC, the DAC will see that it's a firmware update, will interpret the code, and update automatically. Setting up a BitPerfect source is your biggest challenge, and then just playing back the audio file will do the rest of the work for you. We have DAC-specific videos for each model that will guide you through this process. I would highly encourage you to watch the videos we have for each DAC before attempting a firmware update. After your DAC is updated, you'll have a few new features to explore. I'd like to highlight those for you so you can see them in action. To start off, we have a new display dimming mode. On your remote, you will see a display icon on the top right hand corner. This will toggle through three display modes. One is always on as seen here. Second is the new dimming mode we just added. This will auto dim and brighten in between use. So if you change the volume, it'll brighten and then go back to a dim state. This will help preserve the LEDs in your display and make your DAC last longer. Finally, the third mode in the display option is the automatic off. This will turn the LED display off when not in use. It'll then turn back on for a moment in between changing volume or inputs, or if the sample rate has changed. I personally really like the new display dimming mode. It provides a nice, bright, and crisp, readable display when the information changes and you're making adjustments, and for the rest of the time, provides a distraction-free listening experience. The second feature we've added is a input-specific video mode. On our remote, we already have a video button. When you press this button, it puts on video mode. What this does is it makes a low latency mode for lip-syncing playback. So if you have a system paired with a television and wanna watch some TV, you can use this mode for the lip syncing. Now this setting isn't permanently saved in the DAC. So if you power your system off and back on, you lose this setting and then have to click the button again to enable it. So we've now made a system where you can go into the menu, 
scroll down to video mode and hit save. It will now save the setting to that input specifically. So when you're ready, go ahead and configure each input that needs video mode turned on, go into the menu and save, and then when you exit, it will save that setting. So now every time you go to use your television, you will have the video mode enabled automatically. This video mode is inferior to the regular playback, so please do not use it for your other sources and only use it for low quality inputs. The last feature we've added is support for the universal I2S input module. This is a new input module we just developed that will support the I2S output from specific servers and transports. To choose your specific source, go into the menu and scroll down until you see Universal I2S. It indicates here that it's in port C. If you have multiples, they will show up A, B, C, or D. Entering this menu option, you'll now be able to scroll through and see different configurations that are possible. After you choose one, hit enter, and then exit the menu to save the setting. We will continue to add and support new inputs on the I2S with future firmware updates. You can find a compatibility list on our website and see which revision of firmware is needed for which new inputs. Below this video, you'll find DAC-specific links on how to update the firmware in your system. We would really encourage you to take the time to get your firmware updated for the best playback and listening experience. Thank you for your time, and I hope you enjoy the music.